Zell Boy Army, what is up? It's your man Zelonius with my boy Ainsley, and we're here today for one of our first, like, proper FIFA 18 Ultimate Team videos. Boys, I'm excited. Last year, I'm going to start off by saying I probably lost between 5 to 10 million coins doing absolutely stupid stuff. So, boys, you're learning here from someone who's made the mistakes and wants to help you avoid making them. Yes, boys, this video is 10 tips on things not to do on Ultimate Team this FIFA. There's so many stupid things that we do that we don't even think about. Watch this video. Let me know what you think. If there's any you think I've missed out, put them in the comments. Smash a like button. Subscribe to the channel. Really means a lot. Without further ado, here are 10 things not to do. FIFA 18 Ultimate Team. Boys. Here we are, here are your 10 things not to do this ultimate team to make sure you have the best year you can with your ultimate team. Boys, number one, don't keep swapping your team around. All right, this was the big one that lost me so many coins. That's the problem, like, there's so many amazing cards, so many amazing players to try out on ultimate team, but whenever you sell your players, you get the 5% EA tax that we all forget about. So you're very unlikely to make profit on players unless you're some foot gory on the transfer market. And every time you lose 5%, that slowly is starting to dwindle your club's value down. I genuinely think I lost at least 5 million coins on last year's Ultimate Team doing this. I want to try this legend out and then try this legend. Or try this league out or try this one player. If you're that desperate to try one player and you just have to try a new Inform or a Tots card... Potentially just put him on your bench and sub him on. He'll still have decent chemistry and he'll still play well. But you don't have to sell your whole team just to build a team around him. If you're really that desperate for certain players or a certain player, make a plan and build towards that. Don't just build one team, dismantle it, build again. Because most likely if you're doing that, you're going to get bored and you're going to want to get a new player. And it keeps repeating itself until your club's got no money. I had one friend last year who had, at one point could afford Van Basten, Bergkamp, and this was when they was at their most expensive, and a good team around them. A few weeks later, he couldn't even afford one of them because he changed his team so much. You don't want to be that person who's put so much effort into earning the coins to get these players that within a month, you're back to Musa up front. Okay. Number two, don't do every single squad builder challenge going. The squad builders are brilliant. Some of them can make you great money if you know what you're doing. The marquee matchups, they're fantastic if you can anticipate what's coming up. But most of the squad builders are just coin sinks. EA want us to do them to get untradeable players that we'll probably not even use. And later on in the year, we won't care about. Yes, some squad builders are great value. And these are the ones you need to do. Go on places like the FIFA subreddit where they, there's lots of people telling you that. Look on Twitter. They'll tell you generally what the good squad builders are to do. But most of the squad builders are rubbish value and cost an absolute bomb. I remember the Christmas ones. I think there was an 83 Bellerin or an 82 Bellerin. He was going for like 100 to 150 grand. He's barely any better than the normal Bellerin, and Bellerin's normal card was going for about 9 or 10 grand at this point. Don't waste your money putting him into squad builder challenges. I know so many people this year said that they're not going to do them this year, but lots of them will. They're very tempting, and they are something that a lot of people look forward to and enjoy doing, like the completionist. But don't waste your coins on them. But you can do some, just make sure they're the right ones for you. Number three, don't rage quit games. Look, I'm not, I'm not converted here in terms of I still do this sometimes and I'm learning myself. FIFA makes us angry. I, I admit to that. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm some angel who's never done it. But look, when you quit your games, one, you could be stopping yourself from a brilliant comeback 
We've all had those games where we've been two, three, even four goals down. We've managed to come back and it's one of the best feelings. When you rage quit, you're stopping yourself from having the chance of doing that. I remember I played one game this year against Hashtag Taz, brilliant player. He was 1-0 up. In about 20 minutes in he just started passing it around, time wasting, holding it in the corner. And I was getting really annoyed and wanted to quit <clears throat> because I thought, I'm not going to get the ball back, he's just going to pass me around and it's just going to annoy me for 15 minutes. But I stayed calm, kept my focus, I got a goal and managed to beat him on penalties. That was a very tempting game to rage quit because how my opponent was playing. When you rage quit, even more importantly, you lose your DNF modifier, which most people say oh, it doesn't matter. But if you work out the maths on it, over time, you're probably losing a four to 5,000 coins, if not more, every single rage quit. It adds up. Especially if you're on a road to glory account or early on in the year where every coin really matters. So boys, don't give in to the temptation to rage quit. But I'm with you. I know it's there. <clears throat> Four. Don't put all your coin investments in one player. Sometimes you might be absolutely certain if you really are, then go with your gut. But... <clears throat> I had it last year with Christian Benteke when he was doing really well. It was the time when Son got the second his second player of the month card. I was almost certain Christian Benteke were going to get player of the month. He had a great month, but Son just pipped him to it. I bought Christian Benteke's cards at about forty to fifty thousand coins. <clears throat> at one point, I could have sold them for one hundred twenty thousand, but I was almost certain that he was going to get it and that they'd use his former inform cards that he'd had a lot of. So I chose not to sell, and when Son got player of the month, Benteke went for about 30 grand on his cards, so I lost about 100,000 coins because I had 5 cards. If I'd have sold at 120,000, I'd have made 350,000, so I probably lost 400,000 net coins there boys. Don't hold on to an investment too long. When the hype's at the top, sell. Even if you might get more coins later on, sell when it's at the peak value. Don't hold on. Holding on in foot is not a very good thing to do. Okay, five. Link to raid quit. Don't send toxic messages in anger. That's something I managed to avoid doing all last year. Tried to mature a bit. People goad you, tease you, try say stuff to annoy you, but... It's not a good thing to send toxic messages in anger. It doesn't achieve anything. You don't even know the person. And all it does is risk you getting a ban. You do not want to be banned from Xbox or banned from PlayStation for a few weeks and not even be able to play your Ultimate Team. It's such a rage-inducing mode that we, a lot of the time, want to rage quit. We want to send them a message let them know how angry are. But don't do it. It just doesn't help. <clears throat> Six. Don't tilt. Again, this is one that I'm trying to learn myself and I'm getting better at. But when you tilt, this, it's just scientifically proven that you start to not play as well. When you tilt, you're going to drop goals that you shouldn't be conceding. You're going to miss chances, miss passes that you just normally wouldn't do. Maybe come with some routine that when you're tilting, you can tell yourself that and you just do this routine. Maybe it's just count to ten. Pause the game. Have a drink of water. Clear your mind. Tilt is one of the worst things that can happen to you in a game that can really make you lose focus. It's one of the reasons the pro players are so good, that they generally just avoid tilt. We know that there's going to be pathetic goals, we know there's going to be stupid, retarded stuff that happens on FIFA, but tilting doesn't affect that, all it affects is your ability to play. So don't tilt, try to keep a clear mind and you'll play at your best. 7. Please, when you're 1-0 down, do not go all out attack. That is number seven. When you 1 0 down, I see so many people. Like A lot of the time, I play against people who see pretty good players. And I go 1 0 up, and then the floodgates open. It's like, even like 10 minutes in sometimes, they just panic. They think they're 1 0 down. They're going to have to get a goal quick. And then they just let me counter attack them, leave massive gaps, and it's carnage. 1 0 down is not the end of the world. 2 0 down is not. If you've got a second half to play and you think you're still in the game and it's fairly close but you're unlucky to 2 down, you don't need to go all out attack. All out attack, 99 times out of 100, all it does is give the opponent 
a massive opportunity to score goals on the counter. Please avoid doing that, it won't help you for really ever. But, obviously there is a time, if it's really late on, you can go for it, but don't do it too early because you're most likely shooting yourself in the foot. Number 8. Most people I hope know this, but don't waste your coins on packs. It is just a no-go. I saw one on the FIFA subreddit the other day. A guy spent 4 million coins on packs. No problem with that. It was FIFA 7. It's the end of FIFA 17. He's going to spend his coins. He's not going to be bothered. But early on in the game, don't waste your precious coins on packs. If you're that desperate to spend some coins on that type of thing, do a draft. The drafts are pretty good for it. In terms of if you can win a draft, you're quite likely to get your 15,000 coins back. But don't spend it on packs. You're most likely never going to get a good return on investment. Yes, we can all point to a time where we've seen someone pack something that made the money back. But most likely, it's just going to end up with you feeling disappointed and really annoyed at the game. So please, don't waste your coins on packs. You're probably not going to be happy afterwards. Number nine, don't be lazy with transfers. There's so many times that I've done this. I was lucky this year to have a great team. Got top 100 quite a few times. It left me with a lot of coins. So quite often I'd just buy a squad fitness card for a thousand instead of putting a bit of effort and just buy, searching for 800. It took more time. But what I could have done, I could have just bought all the ones at 800 in one big search. And in the long term, that saves me 2,000 coins. If every single day I'm spending 5,000 coins, say more than I should, because I'm just being lazy, over 100 days, that's half a million coins. Half a million coins right now would buy you Neymar and Messi on the game. That is a lot of coins to be losing over the year. For some people it's even more, they don't search the second page, they spend 30,000 coins more on a player just out of laziness. Don't be lazy, spend 20, 30 seconds more, if that, and you can save yourself a lot of money. Okay, come to our last one, number 10. Make sure, on this year's ultimate team, you don't just hold on to your coins forever. Don't hold on to your coins forever, that's number 10. I see so many people set telling me, oh, I'm saving up for this player, I'm waiting until team of the season, then I'm going to spend my coins, I'm waiting for the amount of the matches to come out in a few weeks. I've seen people telling me they're saving their coins for team of the season in October. It's two to three months away. If you think about it, on ultimate team, it's a 12 month cycle. Most of us don't even play more than six months of it. This year was the first year I played probably six months worth of Ultimate Team because of Foot Champs, which was a great addition to the game. But if you think about it, in a six month cycle, that's about 180 days. Each day, mathematically, is worth about half a percent out of 100. So if you don't buy a player, well, 12 months, each month would be worth roughly 8 to 10 percent of the year. So if you're saving your coins for two months to spend to save up for these players, then two months is about 20% of the year. If you're only playing about six months, two month, two of those months, that's 40% of the year. You've nearly spent 40% of the year not even using your coins, boys. If you've got your coins to spend, I'm not saying just go waste them and spend them every time, but try and balance it out. Remember, ultimate team's about fun. Is it fun to have 5 million coins sitting there that you're not spending? It's not fun to spend the coins and waste them, but don't get so caught up on making the very most out of every penny you've got. When you've got coins to spend, the game's about fun. Enjoy it. Buy players that you want. Don't spend half the year with saving up your coins when you might not even play it that much afterwards. You have to remember... By the next FIFA, your coins are going to be irrelevant. What you've saved up for for ages will be irrelevant. So spend the coins while you've got them. Have fun. Try out some awesome players. Boys, one last one. Bonus one for you. Don't forget to have fun. I do this at times. I take it so seriously. I'm very competitive. I want to do my best. But it's so easy to forget. It's a video game. We're here to have fun. I need to keep reminding myself this before every time I play. But boys, when you stop having fun and you're getting angry and getting stressed about the game, 
that's not a good place to be. That leads to tilt, rage quits, being lazy on the transfer market, wasting your coins. Remember to have fun. Try and make a way that if you start to realise you're not having fun, stop, reevaluate it, relax. Okay? Boys, I hope you've liked this video. Smash the like button, please, if you do. Comment with feedback. Let me know if there's any tips, things that you think I've missed out on. And if you really, if you really have enjoyed the video today, really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. Lots more content coming your way. Tomorrow I've got a video similar to this one, but the opposite almost. It's 10 tips on things to do on Ultimate 2. Boys, really appreciate that you've watched this video. Lots more content coming your way. Road to Glory starting next week. FIFA 18 is nearly upon us. I am really excited. You're excited, aren't you, Ainsley? <laughs> yeah, boy. There you go, boys. Zelonius out.